Everybody sit down. Stefan. Shaira <laughs> Vasaman, <laughs> dear all. On behalf of the Koda Festival and our partners, Dance and Suisse Norway and Audiences Norway, welcome to Outreach. My name is Lisa Norda and I'm the Artistic Director of Koda, Oslo International <laughs> Dance Festival. One of the most important objectives of the Koda Festival has constantly been to reach out to a broader segment of the population. During the past decade, a significant number of houses of culture have opened throughout the country with dance presentation as a central mission. The key to growth and development lies in collaboration. With so many professional and qualified dance stakeholders, the more we combine our resources, the stronger our position becomes. Working together, <coughs> Dance can best be promoted as an art form and a lot of the role it deserves in today's society. Is dance truly as introverted as Art Resume claims in his article in his catalog? Here, I wish to say that hopefully after these two days may have had far more positive impressions of how institutions, festivals, choreographers, and companies actively reach broadly to welcome <coughs> all audiences. I will soon leave the word to Liva Rosnwinge Jackson, Head of Administration of CODA and Programming Producer of the seminar. But first, I have the great pleasure to invite Anosa, Director of Arts Council, to come up here and do the official opening of the Outreach 214. Thank you and have a nice seminar. Kjære alle sammen, tusen takk for invitasjonen til å åpne dette viktige, forhåpentligvis, dialogseminaret for alle som på en eller annen måte er involvert i dans. And a special welcome to speakers from abroad. Uh, we look forward to hear you, uh, how you are working to develop the field dance later on today. I will continue my speech in uh, Norwegian. I have always had the point that dance is important. I have always had the that arrangeurs and künstnerer should contribute to that dance more visible and, in større grad than today, be a part of the public discussion. Og så har jeg likevel lyst til å, og det er derfor dere er her i dag, eh, likevel så har jeg lyst til å understreke at dansekunsten her hjemme holder utrolig høy kunstnerisk kvalitet. Eh, og det har den gjort lenge. Det har vært en enorm utvikling på feltet. Dansekunst vises flere steder i landet enn tidligere, og er utrolig godt representert på utenlandske scener. Og det er verdt å huske på det ved inngangen til dette seminaret. Eh, mange aktører, slik som festivaler, programmerende scener og andre arrangører jobber seriøst med formidling av dansekunsten med utgangspunkt i sine profiler, visjoner og mandat og med utgangspunkt i forestillingene, uttrykkene og prosjektene de viser er opptatt av eller selv skaper. De arbeider først og fremst ut fra en forståelse av sin kontekst og med utgangspunkt i en idé om et publikum. Um, Forståelse av denne konteksten, hvem som er deres publikum, hvem de ønsker å henvende seg til, påvirker hvilke formidlingsformer de velger å initiere. Så er det sånn at noen er opptatt av en kritisk offentlighet og å skape refleksjon rundt kunsten. Andre er opptatt av å øke antallet spillinger og spillesteder. Noen er opptatt av å styrke de estetiske fagene i skolen og elevers deltakelse i kunstneriske prosesser, 
mens andre er opptatt av at unge mennesker skal bli kjent med profesjonell dansekunst på høy kunstnerisk nivå. Interessene og tilnærmingene når det gjelder formidling av denne kunstformen er også mange, og så er alle på mange måter like viktige. Innenfor ordningen for fri scenekunstdans, som vi i Kulturrådet har ansvar for, så ser vi at mange koreografer og andre dansekunstnere er svært bevisste på hvordan de henvender seg til publikum gjennom sine uttrykk og prosjekter. Det oppstår stadig nye produksjonsformater og uttrykk som inkluderer og kommuniserer med publikum på helt, helt nye måter. Det sosiale potensialet som dans og annen scenekunst rommer er noe mange kunstnere er interessert i å utforske. Man ser en sterk vilje til å kommunisere hos kunstnere, og denne viljen forsterkes og kommuniseres på nye måter av festivaler, scener og andre som presenterer kunsten. Så er det selvfølgelig sånn at det gjøres aldri nok for kunsten, ei heller dansefeltet. Men for oss i Kulturrådet så er det viktig å se på hvordan de mange ulike initiativene henger sammen, og samlet sett skaper en bredere og mer mangfoldig forankring for dans i kunst- og kulturoffentligheten og i samfunnet for øvrig. Det innebærer at man ikke kan ta for gitt hva dans er. For hvis vi nå snakker om dans som kunst, så må man hele tiden forholde seg til hvordan kunstformen utvikler seg i møte med samtidens kunstuttrykk for øvrig, i møte med publikum og i møte med en generell samfunnsutvikling. For dans oppstår altså ikke isolert, og kan ikke formidles isolert. Med en gang et dansuttrykk kommer til uttrykk, så blander det seg med et større kulturelt og kunstnerisk felt, som blander seg med samfunnet for øvrig. Og for oss i Kulturrådet så er det derfor utrolig viktig å holde dialogen åpen på tvers av alle kunstfeltene. For bare slik kan kunsten utvikle seg. Øhm. Jeg må dessverre forlate seminaret deres hvert øyeblikk med en god grunn. Vi står foran et to dagers ekstremt krevende rådsmøte, hvor vi skal dele ut hundrevis av millioner med kroner, blant annet i dansefeltet. Og det er en ganske krevende politisk situasjon, fordi at budsjettdebatten i Stortinget finner altså sted på onsdag, den dagen hvor, siste dagen vi har rådsmøte, og den budsjettdebatten bør vi egentlig vi bør ha vedtatt budsjettet før vi gir penger til dere. Så dette er en krevende budsjettøvelse vi står opp for disse dagene, men det skal gå bra. Men det skal i hvert fall bevilges penger til dansefeltet. Det kan jeg love. Og med den forsikringen så ønsker jeg velkommen til et forhåpentligvis nyttig og viktig seminar for hele feltet. Takk. So, I'll do this in English, because we'll try and do the rest of the day in English. And if any of you struggle, uh, just say it in Norwegian, I will try to translate. Say it in French, we've got some French people here who can translate. Say it in whatever language you want to, and we'll find a way. Uh, thank you to Anna Åsheim for opening this seminar. We're really honored to have you here. The Arts Council in Norway is an increasingly important institution in our field. Uh, my name is Liebe Rosenvinge Jackson, for those who don't know me. I am Head of Administration in CODA Oslo International Dance Festival. I'm also the programming producer for this uh, seminar. Um, so a little bit about me, since I made this program, you should know where my background comes from. I um, trained as a dancer in England. I then worked there for a couple of years as a dance teacher, a bit in dance therapy, as a producer. I met my husband there. He worked as a dance development officer at Derby Dance Centre in the outreach team. And I thought just that title and that job was amazing. We don't have that in Norway. Um, so he's obviously influenced this program a little bit. There's a few other people I should mention, and that is Tracy Smart at Burton Hoo House. Laura Hunter in um, Middlesbrough, Patricia Stead at Dance City, Stina Nilsson in Kanduko Dance Company, and also Kristin Danielsen here, who used to be a dancer and now is the director of our uh, libraries. 
So all these people having rates, in addition to all of you people who we will hear from today, who have helped me gain more perspective about this field. So I'm probably preaching to the converted when I tell you why this is so important. But I think we should anyway take a little bit of time and, in, and think about what this is, what the motivations why it might be to why we want to work with making dance a bigger part of our society and a little bit about why maybe it should be funded. Um, so that our conversations today can go beyond just agreeing that this is important and start thinking about how can we do it? How do we want it to happen in Norway when we hear how it's done in England and Germany and France? Um, could it be collaborations? Could it be a bigger mandate for the presenters? Should it be demanded of all the artists? We can talk about these things. In Norway, we have a great opportunity to be in dialogue with the people that we choose to set down our rules. So we can choose our way ourselves. Um, so first of all, um, how can we work to make dance a larger part of our society? I've sort of indicated a way by calling this seminar outreach. Um, outreach is a word that we don't actually have in Norwegian. We have audience development, which to me is a broader term. Some might disagree. Um, but outreach, the definition of this is providing services to a population who might not otherwise have access to these. So it's pretty broad. And my experience is that within the arts, it's all those things you might want to do to create opportunities for people to attain a relationship with this art form. So it can be really a lot of things. It can be collaborations, it can, we'll hear lots of examples today. Um, it's based on sort of three things that, um, as far as I understand, uh, are prerequisites for this. It's that we all agree that dance is not a large part of everybody's life in Norway. It's not something a lot of us has a big awareness of and knows what is. Uh, the second thing is um, that if we don't work, if nobody works purposefully with this, of delivering dance, if they won't get it from somewhere else in society. It's not sort of something that's basis of how we work in our culture. So somebody has to sort of go, right, I'll do this. I'll work towards making more people have a relationship with us. And the third thing is that it would be a good thing if everybody had some kind of relationship with us. If nothing else, so that they can choose to say, no, thank you, it's not for me, but based on real actual knowledge of this thing and not just on preconceptions that you think, oh, it's just gonna be boring. Or, no, it's gonna be embarrassing more. It's a real knowledge of it. So who should do this work of trying to develop a greater awareness of dance? Um, that's part of what we can discuss today. I might offer my opinion at the beginning to start the conversation. I think we all have the opportunity to work towards this the funders, the presenters, the artists. I do think, though, that this is really slow-cooked work. It demands sort of continuous work, and it should be uh, done, or the motor in this work should be with an organization or a part of us that has continuous work, that has staff and can work sort of part of their um, strategic work. And uh, more than ever now, because of this increase in dance, we have an infrastructure which we maybe didn't have 10 years ago to the same degree. We have full-time organizations working for dance, where people are trying to work with this media every day. Um, so it's us, presenters, that I think should be the motor in this. Um, I do think that the artists have a role in it, they can, of course, be at the heart of it, but I'm not so sure it should be a demand on them. I think that we as organizations can be the wheels. Um, so why might you want to do this work? It seems like taking on more work. We've just proven that we can exist, we can do the technical part, we can produce, we can sell tickets. Why would we take on more work? Why would we develop dance in our society? 
Um, and of course, it would be individual motivations for each of us. I think um, there are some important ones. One would be, of course, ticket sales. We live within um, economy, we need to sell tickets. And um, doing outreach projects will sometimes have a direct effect on your ticket sales, especially when you have a company there, like, you know, if they do a little workshop, might generate a few more ticket sales. Um, but the line between the outreach project and the ticket sales can sometimes be quite far. So you need some more motivations. And one could be, uh, in my experience from seeing development of organizations over time, is that it sort of develops roots in a community which makes your organization more solid. It makes it more grounded. It makes it an important place for your community. They really trust in you and they find it the hub for dance. And that contributes to your organization, both in terms of ticket income and trust from a community, which would give you a larger artistic freedom. Because with big, free, uh, big trust, people won't say, oh, dance is not for me, if it's a bit of a weird experience. They think, oh, okay, that was a bit weird, I'll come again, because I think this place is great. And it's so fun we have this organization in my local community. So they're the sort of first motivations I'm thinking of. You might think of others. Um, the thing about all these different motivations is that this work can't be run just by the marketing department. It can't be something that's just motivated by sales, I think. It has to be part of your mission, um, and it should be valued by the people that give you funding as well, your supporters, because it's a long time of working before the full effect of this work takes place. Um, so why would an artist want to do part of this work? I. Um, like I said, I'm not sure it should be a demand on the artists, but I think as an artist, you've got a voice in society. And if you want this voice to be heard, you have to build a strong framework for it sometimes to really bring it out there. And part of that framework might be that you make yourself able to work over time. It might be that you find different ways of communicating with a uh, community. So it makes sense to me, but I don't think everybody should do it. It shouldn't be a prerequisite. It should be welcomed by the funders if somebody wishes to do it, um, but it shouldn't be a condition for your funding. And so far in Norway, I don't think that sort of work for an artist is supported or welcomed to a large enough degree. Um, yes. So, what type of work is this? Um, it is the sky's the limit, really, and we'll hear different um, suggestions today, different formats, different ways of working it. Um, a lot of it is based in uh, collaboration. So we're going to think together today, and I will think we can do an exercise of seeing if we can work together. So I'm going to split you into three groups. The center here, I've also stolen an idea. That's the other part, actually. <laughs> Today is an opportunity to steal ideas and get inspired by other people. So I've stolen something from a woman who is called Ines. I should get the right. <laughs> Ines Sanguinetti, which uh, Zana will know and Liana will know because I went to People Dancing Conference and I stole this idea. Uh, so the center part, this will be your movement. <laughs> And if we can make it so that it starts at the back and then it moves forward. So when you hear it coming from behind, people forward to it. Now on the side here, both sides, we'll have a little bit of rain. So rain happens, not regularly, but every now and then. And then finally, we need a little bit of thunder. So we'll have, this is thunder. So we'll start here. <laughs> and thunder away, and it will move this way. So, go. So let's see if we can collaborate. 
<laughs> so open your ears and try to hear everybody. for this. I'm also quite happy to see that um, I agree or um, Anne Enger agrees with me, maybe, that there is a potential in these cultural institutions. She wrote, together with lots of other people, a cultural survey for the cultural ministry in 2014. And there they say, cultural institutions have a mission in society. And a clarification, I think it's there. Oh yeah, I should first mention that these are our collaborators. I'm sorry. As part of our exercise, collaborating is important. Can you really see no, it? No, It's Donson's Hus and Audiences Norway. So it's important to collaborate. And we're collaborating with these people and that's made this program possible. And the collaboration can really be based on just that you like each other as people, but you also like what they stand for. And we seem to be ambitious on behalf of dance followers. So, back to Anna Engel. She says, cultural institutions have a mission in society and a clarification of this mission must be developed in contact between the cultural institutions, the political leadership and the interested community. So here again, this close link between the people that do the work and the people that make it happen. Um, so this seminar is food for this thought so that each of us can go away and go, oh, I think this would be fun and couldn't we work like this? And what a great place to do it, I think, on top of Oslo. Having this overview and being able to think new and look down upon our old workplaces and our field and together think of new solutions. Um, so, the motivations we've been through, now over to why this maybe should be funded. Because it is slow good work and it does need a little bit of support. Um, and I hope that my presentation, I'll just get all my papers right, so. Uh, I hope my presentation has given many different reasons why this could be funded. Some of it is social you might see that a cost in this organization might become an income somewhere else in society. Um, you might see that over time, these organizations that you try to develop become stronger, become places where they can continue to develop the professional people that are working within their community, within their organization. But since we're on top of the world, we can look a little bit bigger at money. And I hope you follow me now, because this is sort of a new field for me as well. I'm in the board of a bank that's a, um, a ethical bank called Cultura. And through this, I've come across ecological economy. And it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, when I try to understand what is money and how should we feed it into different important parts of our um, society. I'm almost done now. Um, ecological economy sees money as power to act. Uh, not just as an artificial thing we make, but it's absolutely connected to the world, to the resources we have, to this organism that we have, to innovation of people, to the resources we have in farming, um, so the important thing with money is where do you feed this power to act? How do you make sure if we see as an organism a world is like a human being, how do we make sure that everything gets vitamins and everything works the way it should do? And the world now, uh, they say, it's a professor at Trondheim who says this, oh, the Steinbuhr, I think his name is, he says the world is like a human being 
he's about, or she is about 20 years old, which means she's been growing and shouldn't really grow in size anymore. Then everything will lack energy. Uh, so what happens when we're 20 years old? We start to develop our inner quality. We start to develop, make sure that we get vitamins all in all our cells. We make sure that we become a solid person with good values. And in society, in this larger picture of an organism that is the world, farming, ecological farming, making sure every, all parts of the world has food, will be making sure that all the cells in your body has vitamins and energy. And so let's put that aside because that's too big. But the other part of the development of an adult person is your values and your creativity and your soul. And in there, at the core of this thing, is the arts. There's freedom and there's education as well, I think. And probably a lot more. So when you govern money that goes towards these core values of the world, you need to make sure that it doesn't just stay inside its own little hub, but it does happen in all the cells in society, in every little cell of this body that is the 20-year-old female or male. And that's why I think these kind of development works should be funded. It should spread to every little cell of our body. So enjoy today. Uh, oh yeah, there's a few people who have supported this already. So there is a belief in it. There's Arts Council Norway, Institut Francaise Norvège, there's the Norwegian Embassy in London, the Norwegian Embassy in Berlin. And Oslo Communal also supports Coda on the as a business, as a festival. So, enjoy today and tomorrow. May it inspire and clarify a way forward for us how we want to do this in Norway. Uh, may it add to your continuous work to making dance a larger part of our society. And I'll, before I now give the word to Guri Glans, who will be leading, I'll introduce you in a bit. I'll leave you with this little one that I like, I do not want art for a few any more than education for a few or freedom for a few. So the core values in this organism we need to strengthen for everybody. And it's William Morris, he was a British artist and also the founder of Arts and Crafts. <laughs> so I will now give the word over to Gudi Glantz who will lead us through the day. Uh, she is a actress, you probably all know her. She. Uh, is a person in many, many different things. She is the senior project manager of the Lustrumia Company. And um, welcome on the stage, Gudi Glass.